Okay, this video is about how to solve quadratic trig equations. It's the same thing we were doing before, so we're going to use some factoring. So keep, hang on here. All right, first I want to just talk through some helpful reminders as you look at your angles and look for the answers to your equations. Um, let's talk about this. In quadrant one, is your y, your y values are positive. That means your sine coordinates, or the sine is going to be positive. The cosine here will be positive, and the tangent is positive. Quadrant two, y's are still positive, so sine is positive. Cosine, however, has to do with my x's, and my x's are now negative, so that means my tangent is negative. Quadrant three, y's are now negative, so sine is negative. Cosine is still negative, but my tangent is positive because you have the same sign. Quadrant four, y's are still negative, so sine is negative. The cosine is now positive, and the tangent is negative. So keep those in mind because you're going to pick angles from the correct quadrant based on its sign, um, not the S-I-N, S-I-G-N, the sign of the answer you solve for. Now, um, some helpful hints I want you just to kind of get used to. Um, anytime the denominator is a 6, for tan and these rules apply only for tangent and cotangent, okay? Tangent, cotangent rules only. Sine and cosine, you need to choose your, co your coordinates on your unit circle. But tangent, if the denominator is 6, that means the tangent is going to be the square root of 3 over 3. You can recalculate it every time you want, but it's going to come out square root of 3 over 3. The sine of this will, deter will be determined by whatever angle is given here. The tangent of pi over 4 is always going to be 1, because think about it, your coordinates are square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Um, it might be positive or it might be negative, depending on which which quadrant the angle is given in. Tangent of pi over 3, that is the, the coordinate that says 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Every time you keep it, change it, flip it, you're going to get the square root of 3. So to make it life simpler, just remember if there's a 3 in the bottom, it's just the square root of 3. 6 in the bottom, it's 3 plus 3 is 6. So what does that mean for cotangent? Well, if the tangent square root of 3 over 3, if you flip that, You're going to get 3 squared to 3 over 3. That cancels, and it's going to be the square root of 3. So you see that they're basically reciprocals of one another. So the cotangent of pi over 4 is the flip of 1, which is just 1. could be plus or minus, depending on the quadrant. Okay. And square root of 3, if you flip it over, you're going to have to rationalize it. And guess what you're going to get? Square root of 3 over 3. So... Learn these. Learn these tricks to help you get to tangent and cotangent faster. Sine and cosine are more obvious because you have coordinates right in front of you. Tangent you need to learn. All right, so let's... All right, so I need to factor this first. So don't forget with the signs, just replace with x's. And then I have to factor it, whatever method works. I do miffed arms. So two, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Factor to two terms that add to negative 1. Um, divide by A. Reduce. And put x's in the bottom and read them up. So what I have is x minus 1, and I have 2x plus 1. Now, all I'm going to do is replace the x with the sine of x, because that's really what the equation says. So it's this, the sine of x minus 1 times 2 sine of x plus 1. So I have to set each factor now equal to 0 and solve it. So this one, I'm just going to add 1 to both sides. This one, I need to do two steps. I have to subtract 1 first. Then I'm going to divide by 2. So the sine of x will be negative 1 half. So then you look at your unit circle. Remember, sine is your y values. So look at where is the y value, positive 1. It has to be in between quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. The only place it's positive is right here where it's pi over 2. Remember, the coordinate is 0, 1. So this x is pi over 2. This one, the sign is negative, so it has to come, it's quadrant 3 and 4. And where is it squared, or where is the sign, the y value, negative 1 half? Well, if the y value is negative 1 half, that means the x value was square root of 3 over 2, because those always went together. 
and I can use from both quadrants, and that would be the um, pi over 6 angles. So my angle then is from quadrant 3, it would be 7 pi over 6, and quadrant 4 it would be 11 pi over 6. So this, this question has three answers. Let's try another one. Again, replace it with x's just to be more comfortable. Factor it. 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, negative 2 times negative 1 gives me positive, or would add to give me negative 3. Divide by a. Reduce. And add x's and read them up. So I get x minus 1, 2x minus 1. Replace the x's with the sine of x. And set each part equal to 0. Add 1. So the sine of x is equal to 1. Here I need to add 1. Divide by 2. And the sine of x then is equal to 1 half. So I need to look and see where is, first of all, where is the sine going to be positive 1? Well, we just did this. Up at pi over 2, the x value is a positive 1. So that means this x is pi over 2. And where is the sine positive 1 half? So this one, if you think about positive y's, where are your positive y's? Quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. And what angles have the positive 1 half? Well, look at your unit circle. That would be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So again, three answers to my equation. Last example, tangent cubed of x equals tangent of x. Well, I'm going to put everything on one side, so I'm going to subtract the tangent of x. Since these are different animals, this one is cubed, I cannot combine them. What I can do is set it equal to 0. Then I notice I have like terms that I can factor out. So I'm going to factor out a tangent of x, and what I have left to this first term is tangent squared of x. The second term is a 1. Don't think it's a 0, it's a 1. It needs a placeholder. Now I have two terms that I can set equal, each equal to 0 and solve. So where's, first of all, this one's ready to go. Where's the tangent 0? Remember tangent is y over the x. So this is saying where's the y value 0? Think about your thing. y value is 0 here and y value 0 here. So what two angles are, is that? Well, that's at um, 0, or you could call it 2 pi. And over here, that's just pi. So three answers for that. Over here, I'm just going to add 1 to both sides, reduce this down to just the tangent. I got tangent squared, so I have to take the square root of both sides. So remember, when you take the square root, you have to do the positive and the negative, 1. So this is saying, where's the tangent? Positive 1, where's the negative 1? It's asking for all the angles that have a 1, positive or negative. So if you look all around your circle, there are 4. Okay, 1 in each quadrant. So if you look at quadrant, remember the tangent is 1, where it's square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So this one is just going to walk around the circle at pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Those angles give you the tangent that's negative one and positive one. You try this one for the whisk. We'll talk about it in class and see how you did. Good luck.